Hey, what is up guys, and welcome back to another video, and welcome to a video all about motherboards. Because a few weeks ago, MSI sent out one of their latest gaming boards, the Gaming Z270 M7, for review. And rather than just do a traditional review, I thought it'd be a lot more interesting for a lot more people if I did a review but sort of encompassed it with a greater question, and that is, what makes a good motherboard? So to answer that question, we'll start by taking a look at well, what a motherboard actually is. So a motherboard is essentially a seat for all your different components and it allows them to talk to each other. So it allows your graphics card to talk to your processor and vice versa so that everything on your computer works basically. And a motherboard is built upon a chipset and that chipset works with certain processors. So here we have the Z270 chipset and that allows for different features to let's say the X99 chipset which is also an Intel chipset but the two of them utilize different processors. You can't mix and match between different chipsets and allows for different features. So things like the number of PCIe lanes which essentially allows for more faster devices uh, things like memory, so most recently it's DDR4 memory, and then things like USB 3.1 is built into the chipset, which is what means that manufacturers can actually include these features on their motherboards. So that's what a motherboard does, essentially. Um, but what makes a good one? Well, again, I'm going to break this down into sections. So pretty much a good motherboard is made up of its design, its features, and its software. And the design is probably the most obvious thing to look at because it's what you see. And in the current market of hundreds, well, maybe not hundreds, but a lot of tempered glass cases or a lot of cases that have side panels, having an attractive motherboard is what a lot of people want from their system. And obviously if it's a jet black design, we'll probably go with more color schemes. So thinking about the design is quite important and it's not just the sort of way it looks as well. Depending on the motherboard, some things have things like armor, which make them a little bit stronger, and some heat spreaders can be bigger than the others. And so, for example, a bit of this motherboard at the top left-hand side sticks out a little bit. So if you have a small case like the Corsair 460X that I literally built a system in today, then you might find you have clearance issues if you try and use a radiator with fans. So that's probably more the case's fault, but it's definitely worth noting that not all motherboards are equal and some will fit into smaller spaces and others won't. And of course, different motherboards have different sizes, the most common being ATX, Mini ITX, and then Micro ATX. And those will fit different size cases. So the size of your system is pretty much dictated um, by the case and then the motherboard that fits within it. And there's also a load of RGB lighting now being put onto boards. The M7 is a great example of a board that has fantastic RGB lighting. It sort of has almost veins going through the system and it looks incredible when you get it set up correctly. And I paired this with an NZXT X62 uh, water cooler and some of the effects I could make were just fantastic. It really is a beautiful motherboard bar the green and red LEDs that do sit at the top and can be a little bit annoying but those are actually now hidden on one of my systems and the whole thing just looks great. So the design of the motherboard is pretty important. The second thing you should be looking for and arguably the most important thing about a motherboard is its features. As well, the chipset will largely dictate what a motherboard does, manufacturers can include or not include certain things on their board. So lower end boards will not allow overclocking, but again, that is more dictated really by the chipset. Um, but then it can be simple things. It can be things like having a LED indicator on the top of the board that shows a code and shows if you've got a problem, what's wrong with your system. But then it can be things like the number of SATA ports, the number of ports on the back of, of the motherboard as well. So if you have a lot of USB devices, then you're gonna need a lot of USB ports. And then things like headers on the board. Do they have multiple USB 2.0 headers? Do they have multiple USB 3.0 headers? And more recently, do they have USB 3.1 headers that allow you to hook up a case with USB 3.1 support? So getting a board with the right features is pretty important. And it does also come into the software side of things as well, as different manufacturers have different software features. So MSI, for example, I really like their MSI Command Center that allows you to easily manage everything about your board in Windows. And then you also have the live update system that will basically keep everything on your motherboard up to date driver wise, so that you don't need to be constantly going and making sure you're running uh, the latest drivers, it sort of does all that for you. So different features are unique to different manufacturers. 
and it depends, I guess, down to personal preference, really, uh, which things you prefer. Talking more specifically, again, about the M7, while the fan control does definitely work, it has a slight bug that you sort of need to tune it within uh, the BIOS itself before it sort of sticks. It's really weird, and this happened with um, an X99 board as well. But the fan control does work when you do get it going. It just does take a little bit of tweaking. And I think that Asus does have a better fan control system. So that's the software and hardware features. But the last thing about a motherboard that makes it unique and different to others is its BIOS. And these days, all the BIOSes from the different manufacturers, so MSI, Asus, Gigabyte, ASRock, um, EVGA, all the BIOSes are generally pretty good these days. We have the UEFI BIOSes, and so different BIOSes allow for different settings, and you can change some advanced things, and then you can also um, just tweak the basics. And a good BIOS, in my opinion, is nice and easily laid out. It explains clearly what the different things do, and it shows your current system and how it's behaving without you needing to go out of its way. And I really do like the MSI BIOS. I think it's fairly clearly laid out. It gives you a nice amount of system status. I really like the fact that you can actually easily uh, sort of get a map of your motherboard. It shows a picture of your motherboard and then it shows what's connected to which port, which can be quite easy um, to troubleshoot issues. If something's not popping up, then you can quickly find out what SATA port it's connected to and things like that. So overall, the MSI M7 has a very good BIOS and it's very similar, like I say, to some others um, personally, I still am more used to Asus's BIOS, which is why I probably prefer it. But I've said it before, and I will say it again, it's just purely down to personal preference. And I've used maybe four or five Asus boards over the last two years, whereas I've only used one MSI board for one test. Um, so I can't really say which one I prefer because I haven't spent enough time uh, with its competition. So that's pretty much what makes a good motherboard. But to go back to the M7 and to give my verdict on the M7, it's a board that looks fantastic. I really do like its stealthy design. It's got a M.2 shield on one of the uh, M.2 slots as well, as well as having three M.2 slots, which is insane. And we're going slowly towards M.2 PCIe SSDs anyway. So. I don't think most people will ever have three in their system, but it certainly gives you a lot of flexibility. I think the RGB lighting on this board looks fantastic. Its BIOS is fairly well laid out, and it's got pretty much the most amount of features of any of the Z270 boards I've come across so far. And the board wins the top purchase award. And there's only really been one serious problem that I've come across with the board that does stop it hitting the editor's choice award. And that is that the, I have no idea why they do it. And personally, I think it's pretty stupid. And that on the board, the front panel connections, they're not done in the traditional way. They're split into two um, different blocks. And then you use a block that you plug your front panel connections into, and then you plug this into the board. But it's done in a non-standard layout. And it means that if this breaks, then you can't connect your peripheral, well, you can't connect your uh, case to your motherboard very easily at all. And sure enough, it broke. Literally the first time I disconnected um, the case, um, then I'm moving on to a different case, it broke, which is quite frankly stupid because now I need to ask MSI to send me a, another one out. And it is just gonna cause people um, stress and misery if they do decide to migrate their systems and it breaks because I was unable to repair it, sadly, because the pins were very, very flimsy. At least with um, the way Asus does it, is it is a standard layout, so if it does break, guess what? You can just plug it straight into the motherboard as normal. But there you go, that's the rant over. I hope this video has been useful. If it has, please let me know um, down in the uh, comment section below. Maybe like the video if you liked it, and subscribe for more videos. A massive thank you to Corsair for sponsoring the channel, to everyone for watching this video, and to MSI for supplying this review sample. Thanks again, and I'll see you in the next one.